Congratulations on a, a really wonderful film. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Maybe you could both just start by telling me, you know, what drew you to be involved in this film and your particular characters? Um, Hyro approached me when I was in a, in a theater play called 12 Angry Men. And um, he showed me the script, basically. That's how I... Uh, he was basically making a casting, and he was searching for actors. That's why, how I, I, I met Hyro for this picture. And I studied the, the script, and I didn't think twice about accepting it. I think it is um, a very powerful movie, in the sense that we want to bring change, or at least a discussion to the table, um, to change some things that are not right. So it was a very important part for me, because the movie is a lot larger than the individual characters, the, 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 what we're trying to say at least. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, well, it's, it's a first. It's, a, it's been the only movie that I've uh, been with, been in. And um, well, he actually just called me and he said, you know, I've been coming back to your profile and, and, and I want Isa to have this elegance that she really can project always being so we have this uh, word like regia you know like always proper always nice yeah and it was really interesting because I, I well I have three daughters and I was looking for something completely different from what I was doing and when he came with this idea and he just said like you know just trust me because we're gonna doing we're gonna be doing so many workshops and getting into this and the the experience was so amazing because as a woman it changed me in so many ways and I, I accepted this role because I really want to be part of this voice that we have to make in Guatemala right now for the whole community. And I really want to be part of this movement and be able to just, you know, take this on a further level. And how familiar were you both with this very particular community, these evangelical Christians uh, in Guatemala? Because it's quite... Um, you know, uh, an immersive experience in this world. You know, you're in the church, this is the values that the family hold, um, this kind of therapy or healing um, program that Pablo goes into. So how familiar were you with it? And how did you kind of prepare to, to play these characters in this world? Actually, um, I am not um, very surrounded about religious, you know, um, people, but we all live in it, like we all see it and it surrounds us everywhere. And um, I actually was uh, very much connected with all of these Pablos that surround me in my personal life. All of my friends that have been going through this process and they have always had these stories and, and I've never been able to do anything like to, you know, just like get them all together. And as soon as I I said yes to this uh, to this movie. They all started coming to me with their stories. So this was like the thing that touched me the most and, and made me uh, I don't know just to be really involved. Um, I um, Hyro did not want to portray the relig the evangelical religion per se, mm -hmm. just religion, organized religion. Uh, I. I was brought up as a Catholic, like many of my fellow Guatemalans are. Uh, there's a lot of evangelicals as well. So I can relate to the religious experience, but not to those extremes. Um, to prepare for my role, I went to the churches uh, like two or three times. And, uh, and I also accepted a role uh, to play Jesus in one of these churches, because I did it as an experiment. Um, the artistic director of this church called me, he's a friend of mine, and he told me about the idea, and I initially said no, because uh, it was weird for me, but then I accepted it, because I wanted to see how the church is inside, in the religious services, and it was an interesting experience. I was acting in front of 40,000 people. The church holds 20 to 40,000 people, it's a huge church. Um, so that was my first contact with this uh, type of re uh, re religion, uh, speaking of evangelicals. And then I went two more days to the church and start talking to people and see how they behave. Mm -hmm. 
for example, when you see the movie, you can see that people are very devout and they, they raise their hands and they really sense the, the presence of something, of God. And uh, I think the movie portrays that very well. That's not an exaggeration at all. Mm -hmm. And I think what really comes across in the film is this kind of like complexity, really, of how people, you know, balance their religious and their traditional values yeah. with their kind of innate desires, the need to be liberated to be oneself. And yes. even Pablo's character, it's, he's undecided, he's very torn, he has internal conflict. So how did you see these different worlds? And I guess you want to resist judgment on any sides, but sometimes that's hard too. I think Pablo, uh, yeah, he was going through a very, very rough time and he I think he did not want to go to religion, to, to go to, he was just doing to try to save his family or try to save his kids at least. Mm -hmm. He wanted to, to, because, give it a chance. yeah, that was a life changing decision for him because he, being in a very, very religious home, it could mean that they could take the children away because sometimes people equate homosexuality with pedophilia. Mm -hmm. So they were afraid of uh, me or the uh, Pablo uh, touching the, the kids in an improper way. So that's the sad part that people equate uh, um, homosexuality with pedophile. So I think that was very tough to digest. And for your character, did you sometimes feel it difficult to kind of get into this of mindset of, the, of that yes. perspective? For me, it was really hard as Isa to justify her in so many um, that conduct. It's really hard because Diane has this mindset of, of what I live and I, my experiences. And then Isa is just, she's so close-minded and she's, but, but it was, in the end, it was easy to understand her. I thought it was going to be harder because she's just defending whatever she knows and she's just defending she's used to being these women who's always like strong and who's always fighting for her family and her kids and she will do whatever it takes to not torn her kids apart you know and and, and i think that's really respectful you know I, I know she doesn't really understand pablo she just she's not really wanting just to react with him but she just doesn't understand it like this family has been so perfect like how come this could happen you know and i it, i think the movie also touches a subject about the, the public image that you want to portray mm -hmm. because they wanted to conserve that uh, happy family image mm -hmm. that happens every day when you go to social media people they want to show you what they want to they want they, what they want you to show to see so um, I think you can extrapolate that into a larger audience. And in that sense, and also the fact that it does seem to resist too harsh a judgment on any side, but it, some bits of it are quite shocking. You know, you do get a glimpse into this whole world that's really challenging for anyone who doesn't fit the mold. Yeah. So what do you think people are gonna take away from the film? Well, I think cinema is uh, an opportunity uh, to see a reflection of certain areas of society. So I, I hope that this movie brings change. And if it doesn't bring change, I'm trying to be very optimistic here, at least I want the discussion to be on the table. Yes. And, and th Yeah, we were talking about this and probably it's not gonna, th there will be some part of the audience who's not even gonna notice mm -hmm. and who are probably gonna be right with whatever they're doing, mm -hmm. right? Like we, we were just talking about that. Like there's gonna be this audience who actually believes and lives that way in Guatemala and they're gonna see it and they're just like, yes, of course, this is the reasonable way to do things. And, and I also think that the, the characters are very relatable, very relatable in the sense that many people are living a lie. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to involve homosexuality. Maybe somebody has Same. a wife and kids and he has a woman mistress. It's mm -hmm. the same thing for me. They're mm -hmm. living a life. Yeah. And uh, they're being unfaithful and whatever. And they want a different life, but they don't have the guts, if you want to call it like that, to, to change your life. So mm -hmm. I think this is very relatable. And uh, homosexuality is used as an excuse to, to portray that as well in the movie. Not an excuse, but as a um, trampoline, and as a ladder, sure. let's say. Mm -hmm.
And it does feel like um, there's a lot of films that come out over the last couple of years that deal with LGBT themes. There's even very recently things about gay conversion therapy in the US, the miseducation of Cameron Post yeah. and uh, boy race. So. Yeah, I saw it in the plane coming mm. here. I would, what do, you th do you think there is a moment going on now where these discussions are coming to the fore and hopefully it m might mean a signal of progress? I think they're coming to the table because of these kind of movies and you guys giving us the chance to talk about it. I think that's the... So I think movies are an agent of change. And that's what I lo loved about this project, that it's not just for entertainment purposes. We're trying to bring some change to the table. Yeah, and all of these uh, movements are getting so much stronger right now. And we have a voice. We have all of this empowerment that we, that as women, too, everything that has been going on and women empowerment. So I think this is a time people is actually seeing some results and they say, okay, this is the moment. If we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right now. And we have nothing else, like yeah, a reason to wait, you know? Even though there are like certain geographies in the world that have a, like a pendulum, like Brazil, for example, right now, or certain areas of the United States, um, they might have a temporary government that is, wants to look the other way around, but I think the people want to change. I mm -hmm. think, I think the the new the new generations are going to be agents of change, and I think that is symbolized very well in the movie with um, with uh, Lucia. With Lucia. Yeah. Lucia, which is Pablo's daughter, you can see that. Our daughter. Our daughter. Our daughter. Our daughter. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. Our <laughs> daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you have a particular moment in the film that? You, in the shooting of the film that you found really challenging. Uh, I know you, you in particular have to get into some pretty bizarre situations thinking of towards the end of the movie, but you know, was there any moment that was particularly hard to shoot or challenging? Yes, um, the wrestling part, the part that you are supposed to wrestle and not touch in a sexual way, that was like weird. And also um, there's, there's a, a part where the Pablo gets injected that was very awkward. Mm -hmm. It was super awkward. There was also a scene in the showers where we're being being spoken to in a very condescending way by the yeah. woman pastor mm -hmm. with the cold water, and uh, that was very tough. Yeah, yeah. And as Isa, I feel like uh, what's harder is how, as a woman, you always have to protect your children. Like this is innate. It's not. It, it doesn't matter if he's uh, homosexual or he has another partner. You were, will always try to protect your kids, and it's really difficult for her to be hidden behind and just like cry by, by herself. And I really related with her. Like I've been in these situations where I always put my daughters first and sometimes they don't really know what's going on and you, you we tend to do this as women to protect you know and it was really hard to actually um set, like my my personal life with isa and, and at a moment realized that I, I was really living and working on some personal stuff and putting a lot of myself to Okay, well, I think we're out of time, but thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me, and congratulations once again on a really... Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, gracias.